Hey cousins, today I'm going to talk about working in different color spaces and about the histogram on your digital camera. This is It Made Clicks, the program in which I am answering your questions. And now it's really time to wrap up the holiday season. Emily and I, we are back from holiday travel and I hope everybody of you who's celebrating Christmas had got a really wonderful Christmas with your family and a great new year. And now it's time to let in the sun again. Today's question is coming from the Good Light magazine website. And over there, cousin Richard Dayton asks, thanks for the, vid the histogram you show helps a lot. I know from your previous videos you use sRGB color mode. Do you find it helps with nailing the exposure? I've always used Adobe RGB and often the raw files don't match the in-camera histogram and JPEG. Tempted to set camera and Lightroom Photoshop all to sRGB now is no doubting your images are great straight out of camera. Richard, this is an awesome question. This is a wonderful question. But um, no, don't set everything to sRGB. You would do yourself a big disservice. And sRGB is by no means responsible for anything which comes nicely out of my camera. Really not. The thing is, I use the RAW format. I always shoot in raw if I can of course uh, with my DSLR anyway with my mirrorless camera let's uh, pull up this one over here I shoot raw and JPEG yeah, and I've got a raw file and a JPEG file and yes of course the histogram of the raw file is different from the JPEG histogram however the thing is the dynamic range and over here we see the dynamic range the dynamic range of the raw file is naturally a little bit bigger than the JPEG format because it got a higher resolution, which means if I nailed the exposure of the JPEG file, then I definitely nailed the exposure of the RAW file, which was the foundation of the JPEG file, right? So my camera will show me the histogram of the JPEG file, right? But if that is good, then I nailed it. Things get only better from there because I shoot RAW. I shoot JPEG only to have something which is transferred on the fly to Lightroom for preview purposes. And sometimes my subjects, my models, they want some photos straight out of camera for their smartphones or posting them on Facebook or something. And then I have the JPEG files already. And then of course the JPEG files should be sRGB because that is a format which every website, every web service, every social media site, every handset understands. Yeah, they all agreed on sRGB. Even, even printer drivers of your inkjet printers, they work in sRGB. If I would give them Adobe RGB, they would run into all kinds of funky troubles. So sRGB is a great format for this preview JPEGs, but that's just about it. You referred to previous videos where you see it's sRGB in my case, and, and let's use let's use this shoot, the sunny shoot as an example. Actually, it's not the sun that you see over here. I used the light blaster with a pattern that I uh, published in Good Light Magazine, which everybody can download there, and flashed this pattern onto the model. And if I step into the video, then let me see. What we can see over here is the camera shows me, well, this is all fine, but here are some highlight warnings. So the highlights over here that I flashed into the background, they start flaring a little bit. And I'm totally cool with that because that's just the background. I don't mind so much. If that would be on the model, I would be concerned. I would shoot it again. But in the background, I'm fine. And if we now go on and look at the... Uh, histogram, yeah, it's uh, the JPEGs are in sRGB, like I said, cool. Over here we see there are some blacks which are her hair, but they don't quite kiss the edge of the histogram, so they still have some details. And then there are all kinds of midtones, like her body and so on, and, and, and highlights, the walls. And there's a lot of pretty bright areas, which are the stripes, but nothing that really kisses the blown out whites. So according to this histogram, I nailed the exposure. The only thing is there are some blown out highlights according to the highlight warning. But that for me means I nailed it. And if I now look at the raw file, 
then everything is fine. If I go to develop mode and switch on the highlight warnings over here, I don't even get them. Yeah, there are no highlights blown out in the raw file. Everywhere is still detail. Yeah, so I totally nailed it because the histogram of the JPEG already looked kind of cool. So much for that. I have my camera set to shoot the JPEGs pretty desaturated and um, that, is, that is just because I'm used to that for video because especially in video I shoot with low saturation because I can always add a little bit, little bit of saturation afterwards in post-production but I cannot easily take it away. I cannot tone down the saturation in post-production without cutting a lot of image quality. Once I rework the files, then I convert to 16-bit Pro Photo RGB. 16-bit because Photoshop can really use, can really make good use of this extra resolution when applying its filters. Yeah, let, let's do that, edit in Adobe Photoshop. When applying its curves and filters and so on, then it needs this extra resolution. It really makes sense and it can make totally great use of the extra large color space like Pro Photo RGB. Let me see if I can bring up the, the color space over here. For example, as so a convert dialog, that should do it. See, that's all happening in Pro Photo RGB. And once I export it, once I export the photos for web use or for any kind of use, then I convert to sRGB. And this is all done in Lightroom because Lightroom beautifully converts between RAW file and Pro Photo RGB for Photoshop and sRGB for the final thing. Probably a lot of gurus would kill me for that, but I never use Adobe RGB. Kudos to them, it's a great color space, but I don't use it. I don't find it beneficial. You can have a look at the color spaces, for example, on Wikipedia. Let me call up Wikipedia and there are all color spaces explained and compared and let's open this one. You see there's sRGB which is a smaller color space and then there's Adobe RGB which is slightly bigger and I would say if you have higher color resolution if you're in 16 bits then yeah you can make use of Adobe RGB but why should I? Why should I? I can make use of Pro Photo RGB which is much bigger which is really cool and 16 bits are totally enough to cover this big color space. And, and, and Photoshop, like I said, the filters and the effects, they can make good use of it. So I give it to them. So I work in Pro Photo RGB always when I'm retouching. I never use Adobe RGB and yes, kill me for that, but it's the way I do it. And I even do it with JPEGs. Yeah, let's say when I have a JPEG from my iPhone like this one, then once I rework in it in Photoshop, I also go to Pro Photo RGB because why not? I mean, this is probably also a statement some retouching gurus will kill me for, but you know, I, I know what I'm talking about. Let's edit this in Photoshop as well. Edit it with Lightroom adjustments, whatever. And uh, there we go. And if we now have a look at the color space, there we go, then it's in Pro Photo RGB and it's in 16 bits. And why that? Well, because Photoshop can make use of it. Trust me, when you apply curves and filters, then it makes good sense. Yeah, just convert it to 16 bits straight, like you see over here. Let Photoshop do its job. And later on, when you export it for web or whatnot, then you can still go back to 8-bit because it doesn't make sense that you export a 16-bit file for a use like, like web. That would only make problems. Uh, so this is how I handle it. I hope that gives you an idea how I use color spaces. Like I said, if you love Adobe RGB for whatever reason, use it. It's fine with me. I just don't. And if you don't like the histogram for checking your exposure, well, use your light meter. That's perfectly fine. But I use the histogram even though it's a JPEG generated thing. But I know when I nailed that histogram, then I definitely nailed the exposure. And that is what I'm after. That is what I want to know. Alrighty, with that said, have a lot of fun with whatever you use. And for that, like always, I wish you good light.